I recently went out to Weatherford, Oklahoma at Cummins Ford and visited with a former student, Thomas Winnegar, about what it's like to be a Ford Senior Master Technician, a graduate of Ford Asset OSUIT. Thomas Winnegar has some great advice for anyone who is considering becoming a Ford Service Technician. Okay, so today I'm here at Cummins Ford in Weatherford, Oklahoma, and I'm here to visit and interview one of my former students from six years ago, and I'm going to let him introduce himself and uh, kind of tell you a little bit about himself, and then we're going to do some Q&A. Uh, my name's Thomas Winnegar, been at the dealership eight years in September. Uh, like Brad said, I graduated Asset six years ago, and family man, have three beautiful girls, beautiful wife. Uh, senior master certified, graduated asset in 2014, and just been here ever since, been, been enjoying it. So some of the questions that I get asked is, uh, is this a good career? Uh, evidently you've stayed in this for, uh, it's been eight years now since yes, you've sir. been working at this dealership, so it's a, it's a decision you made. Uh, so if you was in high school, kind of tell us a little bit about your high school and what you did in high school and how you ended up uh, figuring this out. Well, I was, ran track, played football, you know, did that thing, chased the girls, you know. Right. Uh, no, uh, we were actually, and I was in a home ec class, and as irritated as we were, she, I mean, she asked us what we were going to do for a living. And this is before I worked at dealership or independent shop, and uh, I just said I was going to be a technician. And uh, so my senior year, I started working at an independent shop in Thomas there. I was there six, eight months, and uh, I actually applied at the dealership. They were full. They were high enough this time, and I just kind of kept on it and kept pestering them about it, and they hired me, and uh, I enrolled for, for college, and it ended up being a really, really good deal. and. Uh, OSU was good. I mean, I could have, I scored, I did score, I took my ACT as a freshman in high school. I scored a 27. It's the only time I ever took it. All right. And uh, so my mom and, you know, they, they were kind of irritated. Don't you want to do something else? And uh, no, I enjoy tinkering and taking stuff apart, putting back together, and it turned out to be really, really good deal. I mean, so I mean, it doesn't matter if you're not a technician in high school, if you're a jock or band geek or whatever you want to do, right. you can you can definitely do this. It, it's very uh, well-rounded. Not one type of person, you know, can do this. It's, it's, everyone can do this yeah. if you if you want to. So so you got a twenty-seven on your ACT. Yes, sir. That tells me that, that in high school you probably did real well. Yes, sir. Uh, um, I took uh, I took uh, all the honors classes. I took calculus as a junior in high school. Okay, so so this is not. Being a, a technician, your experience in the last six years of working at the dealership, eight years total, you know, eight years total, because uh, you had two years in asset, right? Yes, sir. And uh, so six years full time here. Um, this is not a what some people would call the thing you settle for. No, no, sir. This, this, not. this is this takes a lot of a lot of mental and and not just physical anymore, right? Yes, sir. Well, you're I mean you're a plumber, you're le electrician. I mean you're you're not. A, I mean. In my opinion, you're an engineer, but you're not you're not paid or treated like one because you have to you're you're, you're figuring out the problems that they were supposed to figure out or you know prevent. Right. And there's times when you like when you contact hotline and such, you are kind of working together. So you're working together with an engineer to figure out this problem. Right. So right. you got to definitely be intelligent. I mean, intelligent for sure. Yeah. So so you, you get the honors classes and the calculus and all that stuff, and you you you, you tend to use that in this field. Yes, right? sir. And and. You may hate your writing class, but punctuation as such is very important for write up on repair orders or talking to engineers about a problem. So it's you use everything. Right. So so you do do you written communications, you do verbal communications, math. you're analytical, you do yes. your math. Uh, all of that stuff is in this job. So yes, sir. So any, anybody looking for a challenging career, uh, you can find it in this. this yes, sir. Career. Yes, sir. So so let's let's uh, back up just a little bit. How did you? figure out Ford Asset was the way to go. I mean, he was kind of looking at another dealership at the time, wasn't he? Uh, yes, sir. Well, this is Cummins Auto Group. I actually applied at the Dodge store. And uh, to be honest with you, I applied at the Dodge store. All my friends drove Dodges and I had two friends that were there. So it's kind of, you know, you kind of moving packs and I was trying to follow or whatever. And uh, 
they actually gave me an opportunity to work forward. And after I was at the program and paying attention, because I actually took ProTech for a semester first with the independent shop in Thomas. Right. And I went right back to college. I was home for three days, so I had to go right back to college for that uh, semester. And after being there, especially the first semester or two, uh, and paying attention, asset was definitely, in my opinion, a lot higher standard. And then like the teaching level was way greater, if that makes sense. Uh, and comparing to ProTech, and like I said, I had I had friends in the Chevy and the Mopar program, and seeing what they were doing and what we were doing, I, I felt like we were more elite and way more so, so, uh, so, specific sorry sophisticated yes that to you yeah <laughs> uh and uh just i don't know just like i said and then being like i, I was able to be in the mopar pro or classroom for one one of their sessions when i was there for protech and just seeing how everything was ran i, th I just think we were way ahead of the field here right. so so you ended up in ford asset um you spent two years there um you know half of the time was in class and half the time was in the shop learning with a mentor which is really valuable yes sir uh, did you stay with one mentor the whole time no or did you? no, no. Okay. uh so with my dealership in particular we, i mean you can call our technician a training guy but we do we're smaller we do everything uh but they try to rotate me around so if said technician is doing transmission work and we just had transmission class I would probably move to him this week and do hands-on with transmissions. Right, right. Or if we got back from diesel drivability or gas drivability, they would try to move me around where that work was. Right. So I, that way I was well-rounded instead of being just diesel or just transmissions or just. So you not only just learned um, the technical skills of it, you actually got somebody to show you that, and you got to learn from different people so that you could learn different work angles and work ethics. And not yeah, well, those. that was nice because everyone has their way of doing things. So when you work with five or six different people and they're in their way, and then of course following the book, but as you well know, I mean, you follow the book, but then you still have your own way of doing it. So after working with five or six people, you can make your own way of doing it and you have more options, more things to pull out of. So I think it really benefited. That's good, that's good. Um, so big question is when everybody's going into the field is, is what do you make now? Uh, the research shows that if you was to become a go to college and you spent six years five to six years getting your master's degree you'd come out and you can make probably about fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year um, without saying you know exactly how much you make you know um, you didn't spend six years to get to that fifty to sixty thousand dollars no sir and I spent a lot less money than a lot, less, you, money, a yeah. lot less money than what you because when I, when I graduated college which I took out extra loans I had my own place already so mortgage had to be paid when, when I'm up there for two months. Uh, so I took out extra loans and I, I will tell you that I, when I graduated, I owed about 44, 43, $45,000 worth of debt. Uh, and that was just for two years. Like I said, I took extra. Some of my other classmates that didn't have to, they were 20, 25, maybe 30 range. And that was full right out. was room board, yes, sir, that's everything. food, yep. books, everything. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm not gonna say exactly what I make, but and I, and I will be honest, my first year in commission, I did, not, I did not make what I make now. And I think that's just how it's gonna be. It's a learning curve, you get more experience. Uh, my first year, I will say that I made $47,000 my first year. And then I will say every year after that, I've increased by at least $10,000 yeah, so, per year. So if anybody wants to do the math on yes. that, you can kind of figure yes. out kind of where you're at. Yes, so, sir. So you're, you're, you're way up there um, in pay, which is really good. Um, and, we're just trying and to I, keep that. And I will say that I had, when I first graduated, I said in five years I wanted to make a certain goal right? in, in my uh, salary or however you want to call it. And a lot of people said you can't. It's not possible in this business, and it is. It is possible. I, uh, and I will say last year I made that goal. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so... You, you did get, I mean, you make well, good money. Yes, sir. But you do work for it. Yes, sir. So it's not, it's, you're not coming in and clocking in and spending 25, 30 hours of actually doing something. You're coming in and, and working. Yeah, you get here early, uh, stay late sometimes. Yes, sir. I get here early, stay late. And you want to do that, but at the same time, you still want to be efficient. Right. So if you're here 60 hours, I mean, you should be able to produce 60 hours with work. Uh, and then I think you would agree there's some jobs that take a little longer and a little more finesse. And some of them take a little longer with Diag, electrical issues and networking and stuff. But uh, 
if you put the time in and the want to, it's it's there. Right. right. And when we're not going anywhere, yes, the the industry's adapting a little bit, and you know we're going electric and that kind of stuff. But it's still there. We're never going away. Transportation is never going away. Uh, we ha- we got to have it. So we're going to have a job, or you're going to have a career for a really long time. It's just changing. You just got to want to do it. Okay, so so I'm going to ask the question that, that a lot of people struggled with um, during this pandemic. Uh, a lot of people lost their jobs. They got sent home. They were furloughed. They were laid off. Some companies shut down completely. Um, now, being a technician, you're 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 an essential worker, correct? Uh, because you got to keep the ro- the vehicles going, you know. Correct, so, especially so the, you're able to work through all this, right? Well, yes, it did slow down, and being paid commission, flat rate, however you want to say that, it did slow down. But uh, we're still here. You just, at, at the moment, I'm thankful to have a job, and that is, people would argue, well, you do you want to work through this? I mean, yes. I mean, I would like to keep working. Uh, so I'm very blessed to be to have a job, and yes, like I said, we slowed down. So for right now, I think we just got to, you know, power through it, but we, we still have a job. We're still putting food on the table. We're still here. And then you said we're essential. We're the emergency vehicles. They got to keep running. We can't. Right. So, uh, and, and as so just speaking from experience, I know some people that's uh, lost their, their jobs and was furloughed or laid off, uh, completely, um, to be able to have benefits through this pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, there was people that was given notices. Hey, your your uh, benefits are going to expire. Well, they had no income; they couldn't pay for benefits. So, so being able to stay at your job, yeah, get have health care, yes, yes, sir, and then you have family and, and kids. That's that's important. Yes, sir. Like I said, so, I'm very blessed. Yeah. So. Uh, and I actually have a younger brother that he worked oil field, and he no longer has a job as of May first. So. Wow. wow. That's, uh, it strikes close to home. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do you have? Many regrets. Do you have any regrets uh, about choosing this field? Um, no, and like, like like I told you pre-interview, we all have our bad days. Uh, I don't regret choosing the career. Do I regret maybe how I bought tools and some of the way on the path a little bit? There's 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 things I spent money on that, that I thought I needed and such. And like like I told you, you don't have to buy Snap-on tools, everything. And I did at first. And it's just it's a lot of debt at first. Right. Uh, but otherwise, no. I mean, I, I wish. I, I want to say I wish I would have tried harder an asset, but at the same time, I did. Looking back, I did pretty well. I don't know. If I, I don't know if I changed much. Uh, kind of just followed the path, and like I said, work hard. It's actually, working out pretty well. I mean, yeah. and then we've talked about it before, and you, you, it helps that the tech and the dealer mesh. Right. We talked about that, and. I mean, the dealerships gotta be happy, techs gotta be happy, and then work is produced. So, uh, no, actually, I don't. I don't think I'd change much, really. I'll be honest with you. I don't. I don't think so. Well, it, it, just from my experience, this was a really good career for me. Um, I started a little bit uh, longer ago than you did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nineteen ninety six was when I actually st- decided to become a technician, and and I actually graduated a high school career tech as an adult when I was 30 years old and then I went to asset program and spent two years and I graduated in 1999. So I spent the last, you know, 24, 25 years in this field. Uh, unfortunately, I had old football injuries from playing in school, I had bad knees and, and I helped a guy load a toolbox for all things and threw my back out. But uh, all the skills that I learned all these years are still being used by me today, even though I'm not actually in the stall working on vehicles, everything I've learned seems to have compiled and I get to use that. And our technology is changing. Have you found that to be the same for you, that the skills you've learned over the last eight years has become more invaluable as you move forward and learn more stuff? Yes, every everything from asset to last year to yesterday is used. And like you said, the technology is changing, it's getting harder, a little more complex, but you still use the tools. The tools remain the same. And then, not to change the subject a little bit, but like you were saying, you've been doing this 25 years. What is nice about this career, there's no ceiling. You start as a technician, but then you can be, you can end up being a recruiter. You can, I mean, general manager, you can you can move up the food chain. It's up to you. Right. And then even, even being a technician, we were just talking about, you can retire as a technician. Like yep. it's, it's a career that you can do that with. Uh, 
so it's not it's not like not discrediting like McDonald's or something. You can retire at McDonald's, but this this is a career that compared to what price you would pay for a master's degree or something, this is a career that you don't have to be rich to get into. It's and it's very, in demand. It's in demand, yes. Yeah. Like transportation is never going away. You gotta have it. Right, right. Yeah. And the end, everybody's got to have the cars fixed. Yes, sir. They're not making less cars. No. When they die, they don't. They don't just push them off sides and that's it. They nope. make two or three more to replace. Yes, sir. Them, so, uh, and e even if they're gas powered, diesel powered, or electric, they're you got to drive. You're always going to have something to do. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, so just in, in your scope of things right now, you probably do a lot of diesel work, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Right now, with uh, the pandemic going on and it's affected oil field and other things, we live in Western Oklahoma, so oil field is really, really big. And they, uh, most oil field companies drive diesels, just not that the gas trucks can't do it. I mean, they do just fine, but pulling the big loads and stuff, the diesels just seem to do a little better. So uh, we do a lot of diesel work. That's that's my main, my main uh, income or my main activity however you want to say it is diesels i do do trains and front ends and i do gas and stuff too but yes diesels for our area is is a big part of it so so i got another question about uh, i didn't hear you mention it so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put this out there i came by one day a couple years ago and i just missed it by like a day and you had just gotten or was just going to get what ford considers the highest level of technician which is called senior master tech oh, yeah. That's quite an accomplishment for you. Yeah, it was an accomplishment. I, that was actually really surprising. So, uh, and I actually got it and I, I didn't, I kind of goofed and didn't check my certs and I, service manager knew I got it before I did. So yes, uh, that was kind of a compliment. You get a plaque and you get a, a uh, statue, a little technician thing. It looks nice. And then you get, like I said, you get the plaque and then you get the deal. You get the plaque for the, your ingots for your 10 or 15 year. And what's nice about, what's nice about it. So you start an asset. And you're working with a shop full of senior masters and they have the, the title, the magnets, the the pay, the, the I don't know how you call prestige. it. Prestige. The prestige, glow, they just, yeah. confidence. Right. And uh, when you get that, it, it does, it changes your confidence, it changes the way you look at things. Uh, and like I said, usually pay increases. And it was it was nice, the FSC came out, brought the awards, we had a party, dealership through a party, which I didn't know about, which was nice. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I heard it, you and you included all of your yeah, orders so, and everything in Yeah, there, right? so the, the FSE said that usually he just takes you and the, and the service manager out and we we're going to go do pizza or whatever. But I, I asked for I asked if the whole shop could get fed pizza instead and he actually ended up doing it. He said he actually said I was one of the only ones that had ever done that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, but, and yeah, you missed it like a day or two, I think. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're a team <laughs> player. I actually caught somebody else's. Uh, that was in the class right after you, right See. after that. It's a, it was almost the same week, and uh, that's how I found out. And I said, "Oh man, if I'd have known, I'd have been down there." You know. Mm. So. And what what is kind of sad about that is the senior master numbers are dropping every year, and I would we got to get that back up. I mean, yeah. we need to get get going and get those so, back up. So what up. does that mean? Be a senior master? I mean, you, you do you're doing mostly diesels right now because of the workflow. But what does a senior master I mean? What does that mean? Does it mean you can you master the diesels or what? No, when you're senior master certified, you can work on every little thing. I mean, I can work on everything that comes in that door. I can work on front end, transmission, rear diffs. I can I can write up any warranty RO for anything. Interior work, you can work on every part of that vehicle. So one, one of the questions I had asked one time was, uh, um, this one guy was polling everybody that he knew that wasn't technicians says where do you take your vehicle to get worked on I said well I take it over here to my buddy who lives down the street and I said well what if he can't fix it well I take it down to to Joe's garage down there on the corner I said well what do you do when uh, when he can't fix it well we take it to the dealership and I said what do you do that and they said because they're the experts to be a senior master tech um, you're like the expert of the experts well I mean we like to think that we still make mistakes but we'd like to think that uh, you just again you you, you want to do good quality work and like I said when I got the senior master title not that I didn't do quality work before it just it helps your confidence it makes you feel like you you know what you're doing and uh, when you said that I when you said they take the dealerships take the vehicles at dealerships I mean we're trained for this and and to my knowledge I haven't met very very many but we want to fix your vehicle we, we want to do a good job we want to have a good name everyone does and Talking about the dealerships, a lot of dealerships 
pe people don't take the subject leadership because they think it's too expensive or this or that. But we're working. I mean, we're going to fix it. We fix your, we're going to fix your stuff. That's just, that's just the bottom line. And, uh, and like I said, the dealerships that I've been in, uh, involved with, we're not out there to gouge you. We want to fix your vehicle, fix it properly and, and do a good job and help the vehicle last 15 years, 20 years, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, so I just, I don't know. Like I said, it, it I don't know how, how to, what else to say on that, but uh, I just want people to be aware of this career, and I, and I feel like that's why the senior master numbers have dropped. And, and part of that, you know, people retire, and that is, and, and I feel like we're not, as people retire, we're not getting the new, younger generation in, and they really should do. I mean, this is a great career. Like I said, you find a dealership that you mesh with, and you can do whatever you want. It's, I mean, the dealership wants you to make money because they make money. That's how this works. So, I mean, we just need to, I hope people get aware of this and we get our numbers back up and, and this is a great career. I mean, you can do, you make good living. I mean, I'm, I'm supporting family of five, including me on one income and I'm able to do that. I mean, with this career. So, so your wife doesn't have to work. My she wife does not work. Yeah, she, she gets to stay. Yeah, we have, stuff. we have, we have three girls, like I said, and the youngest one is turning three months and the oldest is turning four. So they're not quite in school yet. So she's able to raise the kids and a stranger doesn't have to because of this. That's huge. Yes. In today's society, is almost every household has two. Workers. Yes, exactly. If you're able to do this as a technician, I mean, this is this is a, a desirable position to be in, a desirable job, and it's, it's, it's got to be. Yes, sir. It is, and I promise you, dealerships want technicians. I, I haven't really seen very many dealerships that don't want more technicians. The more guys you got working on vehicles, more vehicles coming in and out. Like I said, the more money you make, more money they make. Everyone's happy. They just keep breaking it in. They keep fixing it. Right? Yes, sir. That's what they want. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and they want to they they want to sell cars too, and it's kind of hard to sell them if you can't, you can't fix them. So they want right. they want you fixing them. Yeah. So that's 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 huge too. Yeah. Uh, I like seeing the new cars that come in and look at the new cars, but if you couldn't fix it, you know, I'd be looking at something else. You know, I just wouldn't get it for it. Well, and since you brought that up, the new cars, it's actually kind of it's kind of neat doing PDIs on new models and you know pulling the plastic and stuff off and looking at them and seeing the new functions and stuff. That, that's kind of neat to see all the new stuff come out. So if you was to reach back and tell your high school self to convince yourself that this is a field, what, what would you tell, you know, high school Thomas, this is the right choice? Well, like I, like I said, the, well, I mean, for one, I'm, I'm a pretty realistic person. And like I said, fam family guy, I got married and had kids right after college, but, uh, that is actually one thing I wanted to look at is it has benefits. You can climb up the ladder. You're not stuck at, you know, washing dishes or nothing. Uh, and it's something that, like I said, you can retire at. You don't have to just do it two years and then quit. You can, you can retire here. You can just make friends, family at the dealership and just do it. The, and the only other thing which I which I said I feel like I did in college and stuff is work hard and when you're at asset pay attention don't goof off on your phone don't they're the instructors are teaching you the tools you need to make a living and to diagnose and that's actually the biggest thing Di diagnose anyone can hang brakes but diagnosis is that's 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 everything so just biggest thing to pay attention good deal you got anything else you want to add we need techs. Uh, I mean, we have, like I said, I've been here eight years, and every year I've been here, there's been an asset student after me. And the last two years, once my, actually my other little brother just graduated, but uh, after him, we don't have one. No one's coming in applying. We need, we need, we need you guys, if you want, like tinkering and like taking your ceiling fans apart, putting them back together, see how they work, uh, come check it out. Just look, look into it. I mean, we need, we need you. Do you guys do any kind of like job chat on here? If somebody wanted to come in and check it out? Yeah, uh, we actually haven't done it. And again, I don't, I don't think we've done it in a couple of years, but yeah, the Votech and I think Burns Flat, they've sent two to six people usually a year to come shadow and they stay with us for a day and go to lunch and whatever and they watch us. And we need that going on too. We haven't, I said, well, we've had that happen in a year or so. So but that's a great way to get exposed to it and get to talk to you. Yeah, and then that's, a, that's actually a great way because you're not invested in anything, you're just invested in an afternoon talking. I mean, we'll answer questions, whatever you want to do. So, I mean, 
and like I said, the couple times that I was involved, I mean, we, we took the kids to lunch and you know had a good time. So awesome. Uh, See if we can get some of them sent over here to you. <laughs> yeah, we need it. Like I said, we need we need students. We need, unfortunately, I mean, as we get older, I mean, we all want to retire. And there's my I mean, my instructors, my teachers are retiring, and we got to fill those slots. So I mean, it's a great career to try. Thank you for watching, and remember, if you or someone you know would like more information about employment at an Oklahoma Ford dealer, please contact me at 918-928-7433 or email me at FordOKPTC at gmail.com. For other videos like this, check out our YouTube channel, Oklahoma Ford Dealers Technician Connection. Subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Thank you. Have a great day.